Okay, so Alexis wanted to have a piece of the garden all to herself, but first she has plenty of work to do. All right, Alexis, so what do we have going on here? We have the pond project. A pond project. What else do we have? We also have awesome plants that we're going to pot up. So Alexis chose some awesome plants she wants to put back here, and she also wanted a still pond back here. So we're still debating on whether we want to do fish or not. Yes. Yeah. So she wants to do fish, but again, in time, that's going to tell. Yeah. But let's talk about some of the awesome plants that we have going on back here. First, let's talk about where you started to gather and wanted mm -hmm. to do this pond project. So throughout winter, my mom and I, we have been having this in our mind the whole time. So she's been playing this for a while, and I'm going to show you something that she's had here in the back area that kind of, you know, she had already been playing this, and, and we're going to show, I'm going to let her show you exactly what we have back here. So what's, what do we have back here already? This is a Pearly Gates rose. Pearly Gates rose. How long have mm -hmm. we had this rose? Four years. Four years. And Pearly Gates was not doing that great when we first initially got her, but yeah. we planted her in the ground, and she's doing absolutely amazing. She's already growing up the trellis. And it's got some beautiful roses, more roses it than does. she's had since we actually got it. So gorgeous. So what did you get the, to pair up with Pearly Gates? A Clematis. Which one? So the Clematis she picked is called Jolly Good from Proven Winners. It's a reblooming Clematis. And the awesome thing about this one is that it's going to bloom in summer. So it's going to coincide with the rose when it's maybe not blooming. And then provide some blooms during summer all the way through fall. Now, this area here gets a lot of sun, so what's what's a main thing we want to do with the clematis when we plant it in? We want to protect the roots. Protect the roots, so that means the way we're going to plant it is protecting the roots from any harsh sun hitting it because the clematis roots actually want a lot of shade. And so the rose is going to provide that and then we have some other plants that she picked that's also going to provide some shade for the clematis. Now this one can actually grow, let's see, it says here it's hardy from zones four to nine and it can get six to seven feet tall and wide so that's going to look amazing up this trellis and i know alexis is excited to get this one going here because she's Definitely. been wanting to have something growing with the roses and with the steel pond so before we start getting planted we're going to go ahead and fill up this tub and show you guys what that's going to look like towards the end all right so before we get started digging and planting we're going to go ahead and fill up this tub and let that fill up hopefully that's ready to go by the time we start planting and then we can come back to the tub and show you what we're going to put inside this tub here for her still water pond. So before we plant the clematis, I do want to talk a little bit about planting clematis next to a rose. What we want to do is plant it at least one to three feet away from the rose because there's these roots are vigorous and we don't want them to compete with each other. So we're going to plant it about, about a good two feet away from this rose and then when it starts to grow up and bush up, we'll have it trellis along the rose here so that way it attaches itself to that trellis as well and it's going to have a nice combination uh, look for it once it starts growing up there. Another thing is clematis is like well draining soil. so. Luckily for us, we have very sandy soil. Um, some parts are clay, but for the most part, this part is very sandy soil because it's on a slope. And what they did is when they backfilled a lot of the soil here in this house, they use a lot of sand. So it's very sandy, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig it out about twice the size of the container that it's actually in. And we're just gonna backfill it with some garden soil so these roots just absolutely start growing and taking off. And then once they hit that clay soil, they'll continue to be able to grow without any any blockage or any uh, clay soil or anything like that preventing it from actually growing out a little bit more.
So Alexis has her clematis planted in. Now she has another plant she wants to put in here. Why did you pick this plant here? I picked this plant because when I look at nature, at like pond sceneries, I feel like I would see this out there and it just went with what we're going for. Okay. What about the white? What's what's the white? Like what does that signify for you? So at night, since it's dark, we won't be able to see many of the plants, but you the white will pop out and it will give a glow effect. Yeah. So the, the glow effect kind of, and, and with the water reflection, it kind of has that, you know, contrast it brings out some of the some of the light back here in this area so what's the plant you actually have here then what i have here is a clementine mix columbine clementine mix columbine so it's a pretty cool plant i'm gonna let her read the details of the plant for you guys as well so you go ahead and read that stuff there so the bloom time is in spring through summer the bloom color is in pastels the light it takes is part sun the water moderate and it grows to 14 to 18 inches and the cold hardiness level is three to nine. So three to nine zone. Uh, this is gonna do pretty good back here. We absolutely um, love the daintiness of the flower. That's kind of what we were talking about when we actually went to go pick it out, how it kind of goes back to the water. So we're gonna get that one planted in as well and then we'll move on to the pond plants. All right, so Alexis is done planting all her plants, and the last thing left is something for her pond. What did you pick, Alexis? Let's check it out. A lily pad. So Alexis got a water lily for her pond. Now, we aren't completely up to date on pond planting, but we're gonna get this guy in a basket here with a bucket so it can sit up for a little bit, and we'll work on getting it planted completely, but as far as we know from what we were told when we picked it out, it'll do fine just in water, a couple inches of water. And the other thing she also got here what is this one here, Alexis? Japanese banana. So this is called a Japanese banana. Now the reason we got this is because we have a electrical outlet that goes into the garage over here that we want to cover. And this guy will grow pretty big now. From what I understand, this guy gets pretty big. Uh, maybe about six to eight feet tall. But we're not really too concerned about that because we definitely want to see something back here in her little pond area. And having a little bit of greenery in the garden back here is always a plus. So that's what we're excited for. So Alexis is going to grab that one there and just stick it in the basket there okay so here is the tag for the water lily the color is a peachy pink to salmon orange blooms it looks so beautiful on the back here the bloom time is mid to late summer the lilies you want to keep them close to the surface so that way they have increased blooms and it says here, consider raising them up in the spring and dropping them down in the fall for overwintering. For fertilization, you can add three pond tablets at the start of the season, and you can add two tablets every three weeks after that. Also called Colorado lilies. As I said, they have a peachy pink to salmon orange blooms that are held above the lily pads on the sturdy stems. The leaves emerge with burgundy splotches maturing to an even mid-green as summer progresses and the height can get up to three to six inches. As features their nourishment for fish, they attract butterflies and they're fragrant, they're winter hardy, they make good shade for the fish, they're also bee friendly and promote a balanced ecosystem. The hardiness zone for these is three to nine. So we finally got it done and we are so happy because we've been dreaming of this vision coming to life yes. since winter. Um, a little bit over winter when we got here. I don't know if you remember, we were thinking of doing yeah, I definitely remember. more than one place that had a pond, some water feature because we think it's very important. We love to have the frogs over in our garden because frogs eat the slugs and other insects and that is just amazing for our garden. So, do you remember where we found, and there's a bee, guys, little, just came right into the video, yeah, I wanted to be part of it. So, do you remember where we got this idea from, all from, winter? We actually got it from a magazine called Gar Gardenalia. A book from, Gar the book, yes, Gardenalia. The book. So, we kind of obsessed over the book Gardenalia through the whole winter, um, we were just sitting there looking at it over... Constantly. Constantly. And there's a little part there. I'll go ahead and Ambrose will put up a photo of it. And 
we fell in love with it um we love roses we just want to have water features it that photo just had it all um so you can see some it it's not the complete uh, yeah. picture of it but it's some in some way you know it takes you back to that it's in we brought that to our garden um and we wanted to have little areas in the home that would be very special we have a very we're working with a very small garden and i think when you do um rooms like little rooms in the garden for some reason for i see the 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 garden it makes the garden seem bigger in a way so that's what we're trying to do with areas of this small space that we have now put something special into every area this will be of course for all of us yeah but it's going to be something special for her as well and of course for me because you know um it was something that we worked on through the whole winter and of yeah. course dad and you know the rest of the kids came around and helped too so at the same time it it plays out well for all of us mm -hmm. so with time we will be showing you how it does and we're not done we still have the bottom the the ground to finish off we don't know yet maybe what some rock or Probably more rock, moss yeah. she wants to go with rock so we'll see oh. what we do we're still working with all this area right here and with time we will show you the rest of the garden but we have many things here working um on the snowball by burnham is done blooming it'll provide the greenery we have the rose trailing up once again beautiful flowers when it's not in flower you see the green going up and then there will be the clematis that they planted and then you have a little bit of you know you have some flower coming up and who knows if there's more room or she wants yeah. to add something else she can so how do you feel i love it you love it's it it's amazing what were you telling me you feel like coming back here and doing what just gonna start drawing over here set up a little easel she's an artist she loves to paint so she does amazing work so she just wanted an area for herself and right now how the the, the school thing you know everything that's going yeah. on it's a place for her to come and spend some time on her own her own little space okay yeah. so we're done and we're both happy especially alexis yes so let's go ahead and say bye, bye. and thank you very much for watching guys see you later bye, bye.